Planes are not just technological marvels of the 20th century, but they've also bridged global distances like never before. Ever wondered about the rationale behind their specific designs? In a nutshell, it's aerodynamics. Diving deeper, their designs incorporate a myriad of factors to ensure a successful journey from start to finish. Join us as we explore these fascinating design nuances, presenting the top seven explanations for the distinct appearance of airplanes. Number seven, the adjustable nose. Point to your noses while commercial planes have the typical blunted cone shape. The British Concorde, however, introduces a new type of nose the adjustable pointy version to give a bit of background. The Concorde was the world's first supersonic commercial aircraft, first flown in 1969. Apart from its distinct aerodynamic design, indicative of something that is meant to fly much faster, it also has this weird, movable nose, reminiscent of the ones used by earlier aircraft, such as the Ferry Delta II. The droop nose, as it is called, is a special feature of supersonic aircraft that is meant to improve maneuverability. During takeoff or landing, the nose can usually be seen lowered, and when taking to the skies, it reverts back to its straight position. Specifically, it angles at 5 degrees when taking off and 12.5 degrees when landing. So yes, in other words, the adjustable nose of the Concorde, Topol of 2144, and other similar aircraft are there because the pilots need to see the ground. Since the sharp nose design cannot be compromised due to its supersonic profile, this method is used to simply maintain frontal visibility. Number six, a curve at the tip. Aviation 101 says that lift is produced by a plane due to a difference in pressure between the air above and below its wings. However, it's not like air is enclosed within the two sides. At the tip of the wing, the upper low-pressure side usually meets the lower high-pressure side of the plane. Due to fluid mechanics, the higher-pressure air will naturally flow towards the low-pressure air that it meets at the tip in order to maintain equilibrium. This air movement then causes the tip to form air vortices, increasing the drag of the plane, reducing its overall speed and fuel efficiency. This problem was especially important for aviation genius Richard T. Whitcomb during the 1970s, who was researching for a way to vastly improve the efficiency of commercial planes. He was able to solve the problem by doing one simple thing, by covering the tip with a lid to seal the two different air pressure zones. This is how winglets came into use. If you've ever seen a plane wing with tips slightly tilted upwards, then you've seen one. They were first implemented in 1979 during a test flight by NASA and the United States Air Force, which became successful in proving its potential in improving an aircraft's fuel efficiency. Number five, from edgy to rounded. It was May 2nd, 1953, a de Havilland Comet jetliner had just left Calcutta when reports came in about its status. It disintegrated in midair while going through a thunderstorm. In the following months, two more plane crash incidences took place, placed on similar de Havilland Comet jetliners causing the entire fleet to be grounded. A huge investigation into the incidents then took place the cause. The Dihan Comet used square windows. It turned out that the pressure change cycles inside the high-altitude de Havilland Comets heavily subjected the fuselage to constant stressful forces. This particularly focused on the hard edge corners of the formerly designed standard square windows, eventually leading to all of the planes literally exploding from the inside due to the no longer containable pressure. The solution, simply enough, was to switch to rounded windows. This enabled the stress forces to be distributed more evenly, preventing internal pressure from breaking through. The de Havilland Comet engineers soon switched to round windows upon learning this, with the rest of the world's leading aviation companies following suit. So, what seemingly was an aesthetic design choice actually helped prevent future aviation accidents, changing the face of commercial aircraft design forever. Number 4. Double Decking Bonus When it comes to size, nothing beats the basic design of a double-decker aircraft compared to anything else the sheer impressiveness of its scale puts it at competitive odds with almost nothing, 
but why do double-decker aircraft exist? Okay, the typical more passengers, more cargo answer is straight and valid. After all, the Airbus A380 can theoretically carry almost three times compared to that of a Boeing 787. But this misses one more key component of the actual reason. More passengers, more cargo. For one single long-haul flight, double-decker aircraft exist due to the long-haul commercial aviation market. It is what the popular giant, the Airbus A380, are directly designed for Airbus aims it to be economically feasible by grabbing onto the market with the largest and busiest hubs for single flights around the world. There is also another, more engineering-focused reason as to why double-decker aircraft are as they are. Before the final iteration of the Airbus A380 was conceived, it initially had a side-by-side -side configuration, kind of like putting two Airbus at 300 and 40s together. However, this was eventually scrapped in favor of a bigger fuselage due to the fact that it is simply much safer in an aerodynamic sense. As for the economic feasibility of long-haul flights for double-decker jetliners today, that is an issue for a completely different topic. Number 3. White Paint Ever wondered why it's always the same generic white color scheme on every plane? Sure, there are a few creative concept designs here and there, but the dominant color would almost always still be white. There are actually a number of reasons why this is the case. Let's first mention the obvious heat. White generally dissipates heat via reflection. The more the plane is painted white, the less heat the plane accumulates, meaning less stress on the engines and therefore more efficiency. Other not so common, even stranger, reasons include price. White paint is generally cheaper than other colors, appearance faded, weathered white doesn't really look any different. Greater resale values, companies want blank slates when purchasing used aircraft, reducing bird crashes. Birds can see reflective white surfaces better, even during the day. Inspection reasons, it's easier to see cracks and other deformities during maintenance, and perhaps disturbingly, investigations, destroyed plane fragments, are easier to spot after the incident if painted white. Lastly, white just looks more standard, even a bit cleaner than other seemingly weird paint jobs other airline companies have for their planes without counting that black edgy plate, of course. Number 2. Always the left door. Another simple question that's never usually mentioned is why planes are always designed to have doors on the left side. It's been the norm for too long that we usually just overlook the fact, but why indeed? Many practicality-based reasons have been suggested. Some stated that it's more convenient for travel since taxes and other vehicles could simply set up in front of the terminal. Another possible theory is that it's just the standard designation as fueling or baggage loading and unloading procedures are usually carried out on the right side of the airplane. But one very convincing observation suggests that it's just an age-old tradition. You see, during the age of sail, the left side is usually referred to as the port. The port side has always been where people board or disembark from ships for many centuries. The design convention then simply got stuck as an airplane is technically just another vehicle designed for mass transport. But what do you think? Was it really a traditional design convention, or perhaps a combination of all of these reasons? Number 1. Giant Boomerangs The all-familiar fuselage plus wings and engine design has been the staple for airplanes for decades. Along with this line of development, though, is the construction and design of another base design that came straight out of the earliest days of powered flight, the famed flying wing aircraft. While the look and design of a flying wing seems sound on an outside intuitive level, there are actually several considerations built into such concept. Long story short, flying wings are designed, developed, and built due to one very important reason. It flies as a single solid object. This one factor then produces a number of technical benefits, such as lower drag, smaller frontal area, larger payload, and increased flight range. Paired with a sufficiently advanced flight control computer and its long list of disadvantages can be made to disappear. The best example of this is, of course, none other than the famed stealth bomber, 
the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. In fact, it's biomimicry at its finest, since birds of prey use this shape to maximize their own flight capabilities. As for the next question of why there are no commercial flying wings, cost is the simplest answer. Developing a flying wing aircraft to become commercially viable while becoming optimized for regular passenger use is something that no airline company is willing to risk at the moment. What do you think of these airplane designs? Did you ever question them before watching this video? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.